So I bought an iPhone 11 Pro Max with the intention of recording from both the front and the back camera at the same time for vlog type videos. But I just ended up looking like I'm Skyping with whatever product I'm filming, so I've shelved the idea for now. But since I'm already 1300 quid down, I might as well review the picture quality of this phone and give you some tips on how to get the best HDR picture from your iPhone 11. Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Thieu, I'm a display reviewer and professional calibrator. Today, we're going to analyze the OLED display on an iPhone 11 Pro Max. This is the 256GB model in midnight green, but the findings should be applicable to all iPhone 11 Pro Max. It uses a 6.5-inch OLED screen from Samsung Display with Pental Diamond subpixel structure but due to the very high pixel density of 458 pixels per inch or PPI, the Pental layout is not visible to the human eye. Screen uniformity was exceedingly clean as we ran through full field grey slides with no sign of bending, color tinting or dirty screen effect. Because OLED is self-emissive, the phone doesn't suffer from any significant drop-off in contrast and color saturation of axis although whites do take on a blue tint from an angle. We used our Jetty 1511 reference spectral radiometer to capture the spectral power of distribution or SPD, revealing beautifully distinct red, green and blue curves. The aperture of the client K10A colorimeter we normally use to calibrate televisions is too big to take measurements from a 6.5 inch phone, so we used a client K80 with a smaller aperture one of the few occasions in life where a smaller tool actually does a better job. For SDR measurements, test patterns were displayed on screen using Portrait Display's Mobile Forge app on iOS, and with auto brightness and true tone disabled, as well as brightness set to maximum, our iPhone 11 Pro Max review unit delivered extremely accurate grayscale with a gamma tracking that's closer to 2.2 near black to present clearer shadow detail, going up to 2.4 as the picture gets brighter to deliver more pop. Despite the absence of any calibration controls, color accuracy was outstanding. In this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 color patches were measured, average delta error measured an impressive 1.59 with only a few colors slightly exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of Delta Error 3. True Tone automatically changes the color temperature based on detected ambient lighting, and would introduce a visible red tint in a dimly lit room with incandescent lighting. For HDR measurements, we used the UHD HDR test pattern suite from Diversified Video Solutions, and let me just say that it took me ages to transfer all the test patterns onto the phone without iTunes, unlike on an Android phone where I could just copy all the files over using a micro USB cable. Anyway, peak brightness measured 880 nits on a 10% window, with an EOTF or electro-optical transfer function that slightly undertracked the ST2084 reference standard above 100 nits but most people shouldn't be able to notice this in real-world content. The iPhone 11 Pro Max white color gamut capabilities are impressive, covering 99.95% .95 of DCI P3 and almost 78% of Rec 2020. We played the demo clip from the Spears & Mansell UHD HDR benchmark disc, again painstakingly loaded on the iPhone 11 Pro Max and it looked remarkably close to a calibrated 2019 LG OLED, with some scenes actually displaying more saturated colors at higher brightness due to the absence of white subpixel dilution found on WRGB OLEDs. The iPhone 11 Pro Max also supports Dolby Vision through the Netflix app, and we found the presentation to be excellent, accurately rendering high dynamic range and white color gamut with aplomb. Remember that to get the highest peak brightness and the most accurate tone mapping for maximum HDR impact, you will not only need to crank brightness up to maximum, but also disable a hidden setting. Tap on accessibility, display and text size, scroll all the way down, and you will need to turn off auto brightness, otherwise the phone won't reach 880 nits. 
The YouTube iOS app was updated recently to support HDR on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, although the resolution is only limited to 1080p due to codec disagreements between Apple and Google. Note that due to the presence of the notch, the displayed video will be smaller than other notchless 6.5-inch smartphones, unless you are happy to zoom in for the notch to eat into the picture. To sum up, the iPhone 11 Pro Max features an accurate and bright enough display for you to enjoy HDR content on the go, although you will need to manually toggle a few settings on the phone for the maximum HDR impact. And then, remember to lower the brightness afterwards, because you don't want to be running around with your iPhone at maximum brightness at all times, which will not only reduce battery life, but also be very uncomfortable to look at, especially when you are scrolling through Instagram before bed. I haven't measured any other 2019 flagship smartphones, so I'm not entirely sure where the iPhone 11 Pro Max ranks in terms of picture quality. But I do have a Samsung Note 10 Plus here too, so if there's any interest, I can do a comparison video of the HDR quality of these two flagship smartphones. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.